Hello, fellow travelers. Welcome to episode 002 of the Overland Trail Guides podcast. My name is Ben. I'll be your host. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Shasta Trinity Backcountry Discovery Trail. But first, I want to talk about Overland Trail Guides a little bit. You can find us out online at www.overlandtrailguides.com. We got thousands of miles of routes that you can check on our site with GPX files, maps, points of interest, all that good stuff. And today we're going to be talking about the Shasta Trinity Backcountry Discovery Trail. Uh, we did a little expedition earlier this year. Uh, we have a guest, Joey Grimmer, that we're going to talk about it, who was on the expedition. But first, I want to talk a little bit about why this is, um, I like to call it the missing link and why it's such a pivotal route in Northern California. So the U.S. Forest Service, in conjunction with California State Parks, uh, actually created a number of of what they call the California Backcountry Discovery Trails uh, through various forests, mostly in Northern California. I think there were a couple, I think Angeles Nationalist Forest got one. I can't find the documentation on that, but basically the ones that are still out there and that are well-known and traveled uh, go through Mendocino. They go through Six Rivers National Forest in the Coast Range. And then on the Eastern side of the state through the Sierra, the Cascade and the Basin Ranges, you have Plumas in the South that leads up to Lassen and then Modoc, Modoc National Forest in the far Northeast of California. But they're disconjointed, they're not connected. And so why I think the Shasta Trinity or the Shasta Tree, Shasta T is such a rad route, it actually uh, it connects the two. So it, it, connect, um, it connects the Six Rivers National Forest and the Coast Range in the West. And over the course of, I don't know, 250 miles, I forget the exact mileage, uh, you can actually connect over to the Modoc Backcountry Discovery Trail and right over to Lassen. And if you connect them all together, you can do almost a thousand miles of dirt that takes you through the Sierra, it takes you through the Cascades, you can kind of skirt through the Basin Ranges, all the way over to uh, the Coast Ranges to Six Rivers and Mendocino. So it's, it's a really, really cool uh, idea. And we really wanted to pick up where the Forest Service left off and to keep putting these out there. Also earlier this year, we did the Tahoe uh, Backcountry Discovery Trail. We put most of that route out there. We'll probably talk that talk about that at a, a later episode. But today, I wanted to talk with our guest, Joey Grimmer, who was on the expedition with us. Joey, why don't you introduce yourself? Great to have you. Hi. Yeah. Um, my name is Joey, um, friend of Overland Trail Guides and a fellow you know, traveler. So. And uh, where are you based out of, Joey? Tell us a little about yourself, what you drive. I know you're on the road constantly, even though you've been working a lot lately. Maybe tell us about some of your latest adventures before we get into this. Yeah, no, I'm a bit of a, a, a nomad, as, as they say. I live in, in Pasadena and Portland, Oregon. Um, I work in uh, entertainment, film, and TV, so I'm kind of always on the road. Uh, I do a lot of work on the East Coast, um, you know, California, Oregon. Um, so I'm kind of bouncing around all the time, going back and forth up I-5 from Pasadena to Portland um, often. So this is kind of actually right literally in the middle of, of, of Portland, Pasadena. So, yeah, we did a, uh, we did an adventure. Was it 2019, I guess, or was it this year? Was it 2020? No, it was, a, it was the beginning of this year, right before pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were down in death Valley. That's where I met Joey. Yeah. So we've done a SoCal thing. We've done a far NorCal thing. I guess we got to do like an Oregon thing next. Yeah. Uh, even though we got fires everywhere, which is insanity yeah. right now. Um, what are you driving these days, man? Oh yeah. Um, uh, I have a 2018 forerunner, um, off-road edition, as they say, it's red. Um, and you know just slowly building it up and it's awesome i love that car how many miles you got on that thing <laughs> almost sixty thousand. <000, laughs> almost sixty thousand. and the, the funny part about that is is i'd say probably a lot of people would think you know for three years it's about normal twenty thousand a, a year the first year and a half i was living in new york so i only had it and it was it was parked at my parents house in oregon so oh, wow. I put about 30,000 this year on it. 
Wow. Yeah, Almost. I know. I, Just yeah. this year alone. <laughs> I know. I, I follow your Instagram and uh, you got some really great pics on there, uh, going to some great places. Um, you know, take advantage of that time while you're young, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like you are. So let's talk about the Shasta T. So right. I don't remember when I pitched you on this idea, but I, I pitched it on a lot of the same people that had came down to Death Valley. We had some of our other friends. Daniel was there. I invited my friend Wilman. He invited his friend Dennis to kind of do this little expedition over like four-ish days. Um, what were you expecting? I, I, you know, I think I just told you come here. This is what we're going to do. I don't think I gave you a whole lot of specifics other than like, this is the amount of time that you should expect to do it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have any expectations. Um, the, the first, uh, uh, trail that you, you led was, um, Death Valley. And that was just an awesome trip, you know, Death Valley national park. There's tons of, you know, cool things to do. And then for this one, we were like, well, let's go on this expedition to sort of figure out this route that you now have on your website. And, and it was basically pitched as not sure what we're getting into quite yet. Um, we have all of the points of interest, all the discovery points. Um, but like, will some of these roads connect? You know, we'll, you know, we, you know, had chainsaws there just in case, you know, like, yeah, like, we did. you know, and, and that was the, I think the adventure part of it, like, you know, what will we be getting into? Um, yeah. But since, you know, I knew some of the other fellas on this um, and you, of course, I mean, you know, we were prepared for anything and, I, you know, I was excited for it. So, yeah, I think I think um, when you go on these type of trips, when you have a good, solid group of people, um, it really makes a huge difference. You know, it only it only takes one person to kind of ruin everything. And uh, I've been yeah, pretty right? fortunate and, uh, you know going on these adventures with good people like you. So yeah. we started, I'm going to give a little background on this and then we'll kind of go day by day through our adventure. Yeah, so the idea was that we were going to start in Ruth Lake, which is over in the coast ranges in Trinity County over by Humboldt County. For those of you that are familiar with Northern California. And basically we were going to snake our way kind of on a, a Northeast trajectory uh, going through the coast ranges, through the Klamath Mountains, um, up to Mount Shasta, basically, and then finishing off with a nice little loop around, around Mount, Mount Shasta to finish. Um, we did it over four days. Uh, we did the vast majority of the route that you would see on the site today. We did have a couple of deviations, and we decided to keep, uh, change up a few things, but you know that that's just how these things go. Um, but it can be done in four days. I think we probably did around 250-ish miles uh, total. Um, and there are definitely stops along the way that you can uh, replenish your supplies and gas. And we, we definitely needed to do that. So day one, we meet in the lovely town of Red Bluff. Yeah. And you're coming uh, as they say... As, as they say, when you coming when you're coming in, they have the big sign that says "a great place to live." <laughs> <laughs> you're not it moving there lovely. anytime soon. No, yeah. no, it was, it was good. It's good. Yeah, it's 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 hot as f there. Um, yeah. And I know you were waiting for us, and then we kind of rolled up with our caravan. Uh, I think it was a typical 95 degrees or whatever it was. It was hot. I would, yeah. I was kind of prepared. We were kind of in a, in a heat wave. Cause what was it? It was, um, was it, was it May or was it June when we went up there? I can't um, remember. I think it was June. It was, was it June. Memorial day weekend or was it? Oh was man, it I, I've done so many trips this year. I, it was after, yeah. it was when I was back in Oregon. So it was after my birthday, which was yeah. in, you know, mid May. So, so it was, it was end of May. It was late June. spring. Yeah, exactly. it was late spring, sometime around then. So we meet in Red Bluff. We're kind of going through the first heat wave of the year. It's hot. It I'm hot. thinking I'm just going to be wearing shorts the entire time. We'll kind of get into that later. And, and some yeah, of right. <laughs> that we experience. Uh, and then we, we basically burn pavement. I don't know what, for like two hours um, yeah. going through interior California, uh, typical rolling hills, lots of oaks and all that stuff. And then 
it starts to kind of give you a little bit of a NorCal Pacific Northwest vibe. It starts getting a little bit denser. There's moss on trees. Uh, the grass is turning green and we get to Ruth Lake. And one of our friends who was actually with us in Death Valley, Michelle, God bless him, who's at home with his newborn right now, he had uh, dropped me a pen because we weren't sure what the camping can, like the camping situation was going to be when we got there because of obviously COVID. And we were kind of getting out. Um, I was on my first adventure getting out. You know, I'd been on lockdown and my wife said, you're not going anywhere. And I said, okay. So I was itching to get out. And what do you know? All the campgrounds, unsurprisingly, are, are closed. But luckily, there was this really, really rad spot that we had from our friend who had shared this pen. And it led right to the lake. And I know at first I was a little bit ambivalent about camping right on the lake just because I, I was kind of like, can we camp here? Is it all good? Uh, but from what I can tell, other people had camped there before and, and it looked like it was fine. So we roll out on the lake, uh, literally, I don't know, you're what, like five feet from, from the water where you set up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, continue. Sorry. <laughs> Oh no, feel free to jump in. And it's like, we get there kind of at dusk, maybe what, eight o'clock, 7.30, I can't remember exactly. And uh, it's like 75 degrees out. It's awesome. There's a little bit of wind and there's a full moon kind of rising from the south. And I think there was one fisherman that was out on the lake, across yep. the lake. We got awesome evergreens, Douglas fir, whatever else is growing there, uh, more evergreens behind us and just kind of a, a really uh, cool, tranquil spot. So like you pull up here day one, none of us had ever been here. What do you, what are you thinking when we roll up there? I, uh, Ruth Lake was, was really incredible. And it, it's, it's, again, it was, it was, it was odd, right? Because just as you said, all the campgrounds were, were, were closed. And there was, I mean, on the road, on the drive from Red Bluff to Ruth Lake, you know, a couple hours, there was nobody. There was um, nobody. And when we got to Ruth Lake, there was nobody. I mean, it was still kind of shaky. This is like, you know, we are COVID 2020 and like, it's like, we're good to be out, but everything still more or less shut down. Um, totally in terms of, you know, government properties and agencies and everything and campgrounds. Um, and when we got there, it was just empty. Uh, we got there early enough to watch the sunset. Um, and then that incredible moon. And then I just remember you being like, all right, that's where we're going to be tomorrow. And then there's a, you know, we're surrounded by ridges and everything, you know, so we'll be up on that ridge tomorrow. Like that's the yeah. start of the, the, the official, uh, trail. Um, yeah. And then, and then just being able to, like you said, like, like, are we like, is this a good camp spot? We're literally on the lake. If this was any other summer or midsummer, I mean, you would never find that spot. Um, I don't know. It, I don't know. No, maybe you would. I mean, you yeah. definitely probably have to have a decent car to get in there and not get stuck. But um, it was awesome. Yeah, I'm a forerunner. And I, I think part of the reason I was a little anxious about that spot um, for th those of you that are familiar with like Humboldt, Trinity, Mendocino, uh, the primary driver of the e economy out that way is, is marijuana. Mm. And so, <laughs> you know, just every, about every property that we pass has a green, has a greenhouse out there and, you know, they get a little bit protective over their property, even if you're not on their property. So I was just kind of hoping with COVID going on that, you know, somebody wasn't going to come down there and be like, you got to get out of here or something like that. But it was cool. It was totally cool. And like, nobody hassled us. It was totally quiet. Um, I think the thing that I was actually amazed at waking up the next day, because I got a little up a little early on the other side of the lake. So there, there's, there's a road that circumvents the entire lake. And it's yep. paved. Um, there was actually a decent amount of like traffic vehicles, yeah, yeah, like yeah. work vehicles. And I was like, where are these people going? Because there's not like a town uh, for like an hour in any direction out there. Um, I was kind of astounded at that. So we wake up the next day. 
uh, we make the decision looking at the map and how much trail we're going to burn and then kind of where where the next spot of civilization is that we're going to go to the little general store. I can't remember what it's called. It's it's over by the lake. I have a, I have a photo somewhere. It was funny though. <laughs> Yeah, so I think they have uh, regular gas, and my vehicle takes premium because I'm in like a Lexus Land Cruiser. But I just bite the bullet and I put it in there. And I think they have, um, I think they have diesel. But it's interesting. Like they were, we had our masks on, but I think they were so isolated out there. It was kind of like COVID. What? There's nothing going on here. They were just like totally oblivious to it. I, I don't know if that lady has internet at at her house. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that place was, that place was classic. Just, you know, I mean, I forgot the name of the general store, but then, you know, the, the classic two pump middle of nowhere gas station. And I remember, <laughs> you know, one of the fellas, you know, like, how do you, how do you pump gas? You got to flip the little thing up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, totally go old. Pay, go pay inside, put your credit card down, then go flip up the little, um, you know, whatever it's called, yeah. uh, on the side of the, 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 the gas pump. And it was and, funny and, and a dirt lot at that, right? In a dirt a, lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a good staging area. Very, very big. So. Sure. Yeah. The one thing that I would say if, if, um, and there is another, there is a little town down the 36 going West towards the one Oh one. Uh, God, I can't remember what its name is right now. They have gas as well, but if you go out there, definitely call the store and just make sure they have gas. They usually have gas, but they do run out from time to time, right? You definitely don't yeah. want to be out there at the bottom of your tank. And then, uh, sorry, nothing's left. Um, yeah. And I think before we head out or we headed out that day, you <laughs> went to use, uh, make a little bathroom stop and you ran into, uh, an interesting fellow. You want to share that experience? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, for some reason I can't, you know, I'm a terrible storyteller and I can't remember all the, the specifics, so I won't get into it that much, but it, again, like, you know, just given where we were at the time this year, you couldn't use, you know, the restroom at the gas station. So I went down to the, the public uh, Marina and, and just met, I think one of those, one of those fellows with the greenhouses, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> and mm. I, I don't know, but as I, I mean, he just, he was very odd and, and I, I mean, I, I don't know. I probably, I, I can't remember this much of the story, but I mean, he literally was trying to have a conversation with me as I was going into the bathroom holding toilet paper. <laughs> and, and you I'm know like, funny i saw on. when we came into ruth lake because i think exactly. had like a, little, a little honda civic exactly was like hanging out on the side of the road the previous day so i i don't know i feel like there was something else going on with that guy and no maybe i mean, he was just looking for a friend or something I, I, you know there's there's i don't want to share too much but it, it, it was just it was it was weird and it was odd and i was just like and i I'd mentioned to you all where I was and I was hoping you would all come down because yeah. we are there there was nobody around. Totally. And it was just an odd situation. So Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting place out there, but but really, really beautiful. Like it's highly recommended. I would I kind of wish I could stay at Ruth Lake for another night or something like that. Maybe take a kayak or a little boat up there and hang out. Um, do some fishing. Um, but yeah, no, it's, totally. It's that, that, that is definitely one place that I would love to just have brought the kayak out and just done some paddling around, especially from where we were camped and everything. It was beautiful. And, and we saw some other people fishing out there on, in their kayak and, yeah, and, uh, it was a really cool little lake. So I, I, and yes. sort of, you know, beautiful surroundings. So I would love to go back. Totally. So Day two, uh, we wake up at Ruth Lake. Uh, there's this really cool fog kind of moving yep. on out there. I have a bunch of, you have your drone shots. I have some video edit stuff that I got to put together. I've been kind of sitting on that. Um, and we head out, we go get our gas and then we go backtrack on the 36 because we got to get up the mountain, um, just to burn a little bit more dirt. And we go to the top of horse Ridge and we're not really knowing what we're getting into again, because nobody's done this route. And it's pretty cool up there. It's forested. I know we hit that. Um, we hit uh, our first 
people in a little while. It was that timber operation going on, if you remember that, uh, with the big old grappler moving moving the yep. log. And oh, I, yeah. was, yeah. I was kind of like, oh, crap, are we going to be able to go? But they moved right on out of the way. They let us go. And I thought that ridge top that we went on was actually really awesome. It was kind of broken pavement for a while, but once we got into the dirt, um, some really cool stuff up there. And we hit, I think it was Picket Peak, which was a nice little surprise. I knew there was a fire lookout up there. Give me one second. My Do guide it. just went out. So we hit Picket Peak. And what, what do you think it is? Like an 80 foot lookout or something like that yeah yeah and so that was that was a rad little surprise um i had my five-year-old with me thomas and it was kind of windy up there not surprising because i think we're almost at six thousand feet or 5500 feet at the top of a ridge and uh there's not a lot of stuff to hold on to he's a little guy so i think he was a little scared that he was like gonna fall through the side or something like that but i think you went to the top right uh, more or less. I think they had a little gate at the top, but yeah, I went up there and it was, I kind of nerve wracking to be honest, just kind of weird, just not you, all the winds coming in and, and, but it was really cool because I've never actually climbed up one of those. And then you could, we, you know, we, we climbed up to the top behind us. I mean, pick a peak is literally right neck, like overlooking um, my, you know, sort of to the North, I think, um, with yeah. Lake. And then I took a photo, I had my 70 to 200, and I took a photo of the destination, which was Shasta. Um, and it was clear as day. Yeah. Just straight, yeah. you know, just straight to the Northeast. And totally. I was like, that's cool. Here's the beginning, because Pick a Peak is more or less the beginning of the route. Yeah. Um, and, and there's the end of the route. And I can't remember, could we see, could we see Mount Lassen up there? uh i don't remember I, there's Might a couple be. other peaks around there i just can't yeah yeah you're more yeah. familiar with the area than i am so you might be able to see lassen up there uh, probably on a clear day i think we could see um the trinity alps to the north for sure oh yeah yeah you pointed yeah. that out and that was super cool because i didn't even know those existed so yeah really really rad mountains and then yep. to the south you have uh you're never most people from california don't even know these it's it's the the yala or the yola Bali's, which are kind of the southern terminus of the uh the klamath mountains which are a really cool uh eco region that has a lot of biodiversity and all that stuff so that was a nice surprise for us um we kind of went on a side little route uh, I noticed some of the old California backcountry discovery markers on the side of uh, some of the stuff up there. We went through a little bit of a forest burn area and then getting up to that particular, um, the route that we took to get up there, as opposed to kind of going on the Southern side was a little bit more rugged. And I think we had to throw it into four low, but nothing too bad. And it was a nice little surprise as we got up there. And then, so from there, uh, we kept burning some trail. And then I think we made it to the Horse Ridge Lookout where you busted out your drone. Certainly not as impressive as the Picket Peak one because that thing is like 80 feet tall. You go up this uh, metal staircase and this one was basically uh, fenced off and a chain link fence, yeah. but you busted out, you busted out the drone. No, yeah, because we were, really yeah, we were on the ridge. Yeah, we were on the ridge. We had those incredible views and then, you know, we could get all the cars around and everything. And, and I busted that out and, you know, I don't think the wind was too bad or anything and yeah but just another you know lovely spot to just you know move your legs sorry i'm just <laughs> i got i got a visitor in here so <laughs> no all good all good i know how it goes um mine is sleeping right now cool so yeah we did that and what did we do after that? I'm trying to remember. I know we were kind of run at the top of that ridge and we were kind of passing through these different zones or it was kind of like drier forest a little bit. And then I felt like we kind of passed through some uh, some denser forest. Oh, I know what we did. We dropped down into um, to the South Fork of the Trinity. We found yep. that rad little fishing hole. Yeah, that was... Uh... Uh, re remind me that was that was that the river crossing 
that was the river crossing where you yeah. busted out the drone and got every going across. Daniel yeah, yeah, went yeah, swimming yeah. in the swimming hole. I think there was, I think there was a snake at one point in the river and Thomas freaked out. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that, that, yeah, that was cool because it's hard to find a river crossing. And well, that wasn't exactly an overland river crossing, like in terms of like, you know, we weren't like going through this big river that's part of the trail and you must go through it to get to the other side. That's um, true. It, it, it was, it, I think that was in the midpoint of our day. That was our lunch spot. So we were like, this is perfect. So we all pulled our trucks down there, got out, had lunch, and then kind of explored the area. And that was this, the creek that went down into sort of a larger portion of the creek river, a pool area where I, people had obviously made, um, you know, some, some, some ropes, rope swings and, and was, you know, not a bad hangout spot. Um, and yeah, the, the snake and everything that was funny. Um, a couple of the fellows busted out their rods, a couple of people, uh, took a little dip too cold at that time of year, but it would be an amazing spot in July or August. Excellent spot to swim. Um, I wasn't getting in. <laughs> was it pretty cold? I don't remember. It, I, I, I got in and I got out. Okay. So I, I went, I went fully in and I was just like, no, but a couple <laughs> of the other guys, they, they went in and I was like, I don't know what you guys are doing. I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. not into it. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, given how hot it was the previous day, I was hoping it was going to be hotter, but I was like, yeah, it's not, it's, it was like 80 degrees. And if it was like 90, I probably would have gone in, but I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to chill. But it, yeah. it, it had, um, so the South Fork of the Trinity, um, it is actually pavement going over a bridge, but right before you cross oh, yeah. it to the right, there's a little dirt road, which we all pulled down. And that basically allows you to cross, uh, one of the forks because there's two forks that kind of come in there and meet up and yeah. create that watering hole. But right on the other side of the bridge, there's this rad, rad, uh, swimming hole. And like you said, I think like July, August, there's definitely water still going in there and it's probably like 70 degrees and perfect in the water. And, and just I'm sure awesome. there, I mean, along that portion of the route, I'm sure that's like the destination that people, would would be going toward you know aiming for if they were going you know in that area like that's where we gotta you know have lunch that's where we gotta hang out yeah for sure so i think that was mad river road is what we were on which we were burning pavement for a little bit because as much as i like being on the dirt it's not always possible to connect these entire routes with dirt so we go on our way uh we're on pavement for a while uh we're kind of burning through various forest um we get back onto dirt and you know i personally i i mean routes have parts that you like more than others i think after we climbed up the mountain or whatever and we crossed the 36 again that section was kind of cool but then we were going at the end of the day and kind of burning along a bunch of ridges and i thought it was going to be more impressive. I thought there was going to be more views and more stuff. And we were just kind of going through Chaparral, um, looking for a spot to camp. And it was not that easy to find no. a spot. No, yeah. it was dense. It was very dense. It was dry. Um, not a lot of trees and, you know, in sort of the Pacific Northwest, Northern California areas, just it can be super dense. And if it's not forested or something, it you got no views. And yeah, I mean, we, we, figured out we, we found like a good camp area but um it was all wooded um yeah but you know they can't yeah. all be ruth lake <laughs> they can't you know i think we got a little bit spoiled the first night you yeah, know, it, was yeah, rushed, yeah. it was green it was quiet we were right on the lake we had great weather but we did find a spot you know we found yeah. a spot that clearly people had camped at before um it was kind of at the, the intersection of these two roads but yeah. we hadn't really after we saw that logging operation, um, I think we, I don't know if we passed anybody else that day, or we may have passed like one person and like a side-by-side -side or something like that, but I, that was it. There was nobody out there. For all that time driving, I, I don't even remember passing a person, but I know when we made camp, one car came around the area. Yeah. But that's, I mean, seriously, that's like 
two days almost or a full day not seeing any other cars crazy yeah, ex except some rad. guy in his honda civic so oh, i mean he was back in town he just wanted yeah, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> in town <laughs> yes so we set up camp i don't even know what to call that camp um i forget what the exact location it was the thing that i will so we set up camp we had a little campfire um you know, there was enough room for everybody. It was nice and quiet. We weren't going to be bothered. I woke up in the middle of the night and it was like sensory deprivation. It was so quiet. There was like not a cricket. There was nothing rustling in the trees or the bushes. And I couldn't see anything because we were like under the trees and it was just dark and I couldn't hear anything. And it was kind of a, it was weird. It was kind of creepy for me, honestly. Um, cause I, I'm used to hearing like crickets outside or if you're camping on the beach or you can hear some the, sort of the white noise or something. Exactly. Yeah. It was, it was odd, man. You know, it was kind of like, am I alive? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you yeah. think about the spot? What were the, what were the vibes that you got from that? I was... I mean, honest, it was, I was a little spooked out of it. it like, spooked I, I, listen, it, it, no, no, if it, if it would have been me, I mean, again, it was not a creepy spot or anything, but it was so quiet. It was so heavily forested. It was so in the middle of nowhere wilderness, but with no, you know, features that we're usually looking for. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, it, it would have been a spot that if I was traveling alone, I would have been like, eh, I'll just keep going for, I think it was two more hours till we kind of hit the, the <laughs> next like good camp spot the next yeah. day. Right. Yeah. So like, that's how long we would have had to continue traveling. And I think we were all just wiped at that point. We're like, this yeah. looks good. We can, we can, you know, have a make camp here. Um, there's some area to, to, to hang out in and, and kind of do our thing. Um, but definitely wasn't a spot that I would normally just camp myself. I think I, we're kind of like just not too far off the road. Yeah. And, you know, so a little vulnerable and everything. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it was fun, but it, you know, I, it was good with the, with the crew. Yes. I would go there with the crew, but if yeah, I were exactly. to go back and do that, like by myself or with my kid, I'd be like, I don't think I'm going to camp there. I'm going to find somewhere else to go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we get up the next day, uh, day three, um, and we are heading towards highway 299 because 299 acts as a connector, uh, to get onto more dirt over by, uh, Trinity Lake, basically. Um, we stop in Douglas city that actually I thought the, I thought the route was kind of cool from our campsite because it kind of dropped down It went through some cool valleys, uh, there were some cool like farmhouses out there and it kind of followed some creeks and it was shaded and it was a little bit different than what we'd been going through before. What, was that before or after the rattlesnake? That was before the rattlesnake. Okay. Yeah, okay. So was, that was yeah. well before. So that was when we That's were dropping, okay. we dropped down the ridge. We kind of dropped down the mountain yeah, and then it was okay. going through some like open lands and kind of different terrain yeah. and all that stuff. And then we, we went to Douglas City. Um, yeah. I think some people got some ice. I probably yeah. should have got some gas, but I was like, no, I don't need any. Or did you opt out? <laughs> I think I did. I think we I think all I did. did. I don't know if any of us actually filled up. I think we yeah. just said, eh, yeah. whatever. But yeah. And we were fine, but like, I, looking back, I definitely would have filled up for sure. Yeah. But that was a so cool we, Douglas City. That was that was an interesting spot. That was a really cool little like mid um, uh, uh road trip, you know, spot to like, just, you know, regroup totally. and get some gas and get some ice and, and whatever last minute provisions you need to, to do again, cool little, just old yeah. school, you know? Yeah. And they got the river going through there. So there's a lot of great camping sites. If you're an angler, yeah. tons of places you can. Oh you yeah. Can, no. Uh, and in there they had, you know, photos of, of everybody who, you know, come to the area and like caught salmon. I was like, I didn't realize there was a big salmon run down here. And Huge. you know, giant yeah. salmon Real and stuff. Head. So it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some campsites along the river down too. I mean, they're developed campsites, but they're right on the river. So, you know, I usually 
usually when I'm doing these things and I'm not with my pops or something, I try to get away from the develop stuff. But if it's right on the river and it's so far out there, um, I'd want to check those out. I kind of want to go back there and explore, explore the area a little bit more. Yeah. So Thomas is getting car sick. Um, I can't remember if I got him Dramamine or not. He's kind of going through this bout of car sickness. And again, Thomas is my five-year-old and I think, I think I got him some Dramamine there, but it took a little while for it to kick in. I, I can't remember. Um, we're going on the 299. We had to stop a little bit. And then uh, we get off the 299 and we're kind of heading along Trinity Lake. Uh, we're on pavement for a while. I remember we're going through that that burn zone and the forest fire. And then finally it turns in, it turns into dirt and we get up Trinity Mountain. And that's where you busted out your drone again. Do you want to talk a little bit about that uh, that zone that we were up there at? Um, so I'm trying. I'm just trying to regroup in my head everything. There's so many spots that we stopped. I off. know. Um, this are, are, are this you is talking the about one. Just, were were we a, the lunch spot where we all got out and just like waited in the river, or we were up on a mountain? We were on top of the mountain. Yeah, and you got the drone out, and we were kind of running along the ridge, and we had the mountains on one side. Uh, oh, oh, is that the? Uh, sorry, so again, so many. Is that is that the one where like we're like we like the ridge, and then we just were running down. I thought that was exactly. closer to Shasta or something, but it's kind know, of a midway just, point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, just you know, just awesome lookouts and everything. I mean, just. I mean that whole area, but you know, one of the great lookout points, I, I think. Um, yeah. And we had a lot of fun playing around with the drone there and getting some shots of, of the cars driving down and everything. It was incredible. Yeah. So I think it was Trinity mountain that we went to the top of uh, it's in, it's in the middle of the bur burn zone, but because of the burn and I think it's, it's within the last couple of years um, it's actually open which is kind of nice. So you have like 360 degree views. You can kind of go on the top of these ridges. Yeah. I think you can see Trinity Lake below um, in certain places. I can't remember, but you have the Trinity Alps right there, which is really cool. So if you go there and like uh, earlier in the season, like we did, even though it wasn't a heavy pre precipitation year, there wasn't a ton of snow on them, but I would love to go back there. Uh, another time when maybe it's a heavy precipitation year and you kind of get the backdrop of the Trinity Alps right there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really no, cool. Yeah, what, what, you know, what I loved about this route, I mean, it was just, there were so many points of interest that I want and we'll definitely be talking about some more of them, but so many that I would definitely just go back to just for, yeah. you know, the backdrop or something, it, you know, it's unfortunate we didn't spend more time, get to spend more time, you know, at every one of these spots. So yeah. Yeah. And then, so we burned on that ridge for a little bit a while. And I think we dropped down towards, uh, and this is not officially part of the route and we ended up changing a little bit, but obviously this is how these things go. You know, you, you see a point and you want to go check it out. We dropped down to the East Fork of the Trinity River and that yeah. was where we had lunch right on the river. That looked like it could have been a good fishing spot. I, I don't know. You're more of a fisherman than me. Um, did you bust out your pole there? Yeah, no, um, both, uh, Wilman and I busted out our rods. I got my, my, you know, I spent a little time getting my fly rod together and, and, you know, no bites, but, um, we all waited, you know, it was a pretty decent, you know, uh, uh, wide, decently wide river to sort of wade through and it was pretty weightable, um, in that section that we went to and, you know, we got, you know, we got a little dirty getting in there and I think there's a little bit of a, a muddy area we all got our cars wet in to, to get to where we actually sort of posted up for, for lunch and everything um but i mean you know we didn't spend a lot of time really in the trinity river or sorry trinity lake like area but i mean massive on the map right so we were just on this one little blip of where like like small part of it where it opened up into the main um lake or or, or whatever it was it, trinity lake correct Yes. So, and I believe yeah, that was the new fork of the Trinity that, uh, that feeds in there for those of yeah, you that are Yeah, Because on the map, it's such an odd, it's, it's, you know, you have sort of to the north, one, 
um, sort of larger area, but it just looks like all these water features kind of go into the mountain in different areas. And it would just be so much fun to go out and explore all the different little peninsulas and inlets and, and sections of that. And, and, you know, where we had, you know, made a lunch was, was, a, was a lot of fun on its own. Yeah, it was. Um, and I, and it, it, it's a huge area too. There's dirt roads that go everywhere over there. And the lake was, it wasn't as high as it could be, you know, it wasn't low, but it, it wasn't seemed high. low, right? It seemed yeah. a little low. Yeah. So, you know, maybe in a year again, when lots of rain, you can camp right next to the lake, <laughs> do some fishing there, take your boats out, whatever your kayak raft, whatever you have. But regardless, um, there's dirt roads everywhere where we were at. You, you could camp there. I mean, there yeah. was, I believe it is U.S. Forest Service managed land, and there was definitely some fire pits over there. Uh, th I think the only downside is it looked like it, it get, probably gets a little bit hot, but me, I just go sit in the river when that happens. I don't care. Yeah, no, I mean, at that time of year that we went, it was probably pretty good. And, and, and getting to that section, that, you know, Trinity Lake and stuff, that is where I wish we would have camped the night before if it was just a little bit closer. Yeah. And if you were like really gunning, like in midsummer when the days are long and everything, you could probably make it, but as early as we went in the year, I think it was just like, you know, the, the, where we had camped the night before was totally fine. Yeah. And I think that was like at least three hours away from where we was it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, was just like, like, I wish we could have camped here, you know, yeah. last night, but eh, whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. But then, yeah. but then, but then, but then we did <laughs> camp at a rad spot for the last night. You want to basically, basically day three, night three, not the last I, night, but night three. I, I tell people about this spot. It's, it's one of those spots that you want to tell people about, but not tell them where it's at. Show photos, show the drone shots, tell them how you got there, but yeah. not give them the GPX coordinate, you know, the, the yeah. waypoint or the GPS coordinate or anything like that because you it, it i mean it was one of the coolest spots ever so take it away no why don't i want you're the guest let's talk about it so why don't you talk uh we went to tamarack lake tamarack so, lake tamarack and, and lake. i and i think there might be two in california i don't know if that's true but every time i type in google maps tamarack lake it oh, takes yeah. me to the other side the east side of the i-5 but but this is you know along this route um, in the Shasta Trinity and, and, you know, we, and, and we got off sort of the main trail system and had it, and it was our first time actually having to go into, you know, you know, four wheel drive, um, for, for low, for high, um, and doing some more technical routes because a lot of these had been sort of easier, simpler, just forestry roads. Um, and you actually needed a high clearance higher clearance or stock four wheel drive um to get up there a couple of the guys we were with were having a little bit more fun in their um in their cars you know just plopping around i wasn't sure if they were going to make yeah. it but they did yeah. um and and so that was a lot of fun being able to do a technical route um a more technical route uh through this entire you know route um and then you know, then we ended up at Tamarack Lake after, uh, you know, a few bruises on our cars probably. And I mean, just incredible. There was, it's all dispersed camping, um, this beautiful lake with this rid, this rocky ridge line, I believe to the south of it, you know, looking towards the south. And, um, and I mean, we just, we, we found a camp. Unfortunately, it wasn't the camp that the one other people were at. <laughs> um, the one other group, um, but they had uh, made camp and I, it was just, it was awesome. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Um, we'll talk about the vehicles and kind of smashing up that dirt road because if I had a RAV4 or a Subaru that wasn't lifted with some good tires, no. I would not take it there. I think, uh, a minimum vehicle that you're looking at is like a, a stock four runner with four low to get up there. But yeah. I, I, re I remembered, and I want to come back to Tamarack Lake, but I remembered uh, the section that I wasn't clear on if we were going to be able to connect the route. And it was between 
the East Fork of uh, the Trinity, where we had had lunch, and up to um, up to Tamarack Lake. And so we went on some kind of cool mountain roads where it definitely felt more like probably like high Sierra, high Cascades a little bit, a little bit more rock, steep hillsides, kind of big boulders inside of the ravines and all that stuff. And that is the section I was kind of like, okay, I could definitely see like there's a landslide here or something's closed and this, this trail doesn't connect, but we were fortunate and it did connect. And I thought that was kind of a, a nice segue because that was a really different zone than some of the other stuff that we had been going through. We had gone through like lush forests and kind of like uh, what I would call like NorCal forests, which are a little bit drier than you see in the Pacific Northwest uh, to kind of like rolling grasslands and chaparral and oak and all that stuff. And then we get up to more of kind of like rugged terrain. There's like exposed rocks. It's a little yeah. bit rockier. And we're climbing, we're going down the mountain. We're kind of going on the side of mountains and climbing up and nothing, you know, nothing that a RAV4 couldn't handle for sure. It gets a yep. little steep, but then we go to Tamarack Lake, like you said, and that's definitely a trail. If you got a stock forerunner, you probably got to take it slow. So you're not hitting your, your yeah, running you, you can definitely hit it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, our buddy, Daniel, He's got a pretty modded out Tundra and he's just smashing, right? He's just full bore ahead, yeah, taking yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. And, then our, <laughs> and then our other buddy, he's got a stock Mitsubishi Montero. I don't know how long he had had it, but he's with trying to keep running up, board. So it's with just running board. isn't the highest running clearance board. vehicle. And he's trying to keep up with Daniel you know, who's got a lift, he's got massive tires, he's, he's got rock sliders on there. And then uh, this other guy's trying to keep up with him. And he's just, he is just beating the crap out of his car. I think a couple of us thought he was going to lose a running board while trying to get up there. But yeah, no, no, we, 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 we he definitely we, we could tell he felt a little bruised up when he got to the top. And we were just like, you good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was kind of like me. I think it was kind of like the two of us when we were um, doing Death Valley and we were um, doing Steel Pass. We we're like, well, our cars are getting um, dented. Like, yeah. there's no way around this. It's going to happen, but it, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> you know, not, yeah. and it, again, not dented or anything, but, you know. Yeah. And that, that's because uh, Joey and I both have running boards on our car right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so our running boards got dented. Yeah. Uh, mine got scratched. Big deal. You know, it, yeah, it, yeah. it was nothing too big. Um, yeah. So we make it up there. Uh, you do some drone flights. We're just hanging out. Um, I want to talk about it a little bit. So as you mentioned, there's a really, really rad spot right on the lake. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get that spot, but we did get another spot not too far from the lake, like what, 50, maybe like 20, 25 yards from the lake or whatever. And you can see it right there. So it was still pretty, pretty cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Now, I had a couple beers that night and <laughs> I wake up and I don't know what time it is. And I hear people go, Wah! and I'm going, what the hell is that? Like our neighbors over the way, they were target shooting, which kind of seemed odd because like, oh. we are not that we won't get into that. But I was kind of like, are, are you really target shooting like 75 yards away from us? Um, they didn't seem like the type that was going to party and go crazy, especially since they didn't seem like they were raging it up before. Well, I had found out that somebody had rolled in, I guess, after dark. Oh, that's right. Up yeah, on yeah. the hill behind us and they were raging it. So th there's all these other cool four wheel trails and some of them are pretty gnarly. Like if you got a rock crawler, definitely stuff up there you could take it on. But there's also kind of go arounds the back way that you can kind of camp. Uh, it's not next to the lake, but it, just the scenery up there is just, it's yeah. magnificent. It, it's so I, awesome. I've talked with some of the guys about possibly going up there again and, and kind of like just spending a day or two there alone to discover yeah. the area around the lake itself. Because again, like I was saying, you know, to, to on one side of the lake was the mountain. You can just hike up it and you could spend, yeah. you know, half your day just hiking up to the top totally. of it. And it's probably the highest point around. And you look straight down, you could paddleboard as our neighbors were doing in the, you know, the night yeah. before, you know, paddleboard around the lake and just empty, beautiful views. Um, and there were all the, uh, four by four trails 
it kind of like that we didn't really get to discover, but you know, totally. the Montero was not going up a, up any of them. Daniel and I thought about going and trying them out yeah. a little bit, but I think we'd have to spend, you know, a few hours there and, and, wow. and have our tracks and, and, you know, have our winch ready probably. But, um, but I mean, just something for everybody up there. And if you totally. can get a spot and just, you know, you, you could spend an entire day just exploring the area and doing different activities, um, which is kind of what makes it pretty cool. Um, yeah. And, and just in the middle of nowhere, you have to, there, you know, you're not getting the Prius, you're not getting the Honda Civic up there. You're not even getting the Subaru up there. You have to have a, a decent, um, you know, higher stance vehicle. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think the one thing that I was amazed about, like our neighbors that were over there, I think they had like an Isuzu Trooper. They had like three dogs. Uh, they had like paddle boards. I'm like, how did you fit all this stuff in your vehicle? You know, but yeah. they they did. Um, I don't know how they did it. Um, no, yeah, they, but yeah, they they were campers. They they had a they had one of those like like classic, you know, you know, with the rooftop ten older 80s 90s either it was a trooper or a land rover or something but like that kind of classic like style overland vehicles so it was cool to kind of see them like just positioned where they were with all their stuff yeah. so it was, yeah 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 definitely got some good sh shots of their uh their rig but if you go up there um it's so far out there you know it doesn't get the crowds from like the bay area or portland because it kind of sits right in the middle it's mostly locals going out there yeah. but there's only really two lakeside spots. You know, there's one that's yeah. super rad that we didn't get. And there's the other one that we got. Um, you probably got to get up on there a Thursday. I think we were there so early in the year, we kind of lucked out and got our spot. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what you would kind of do in the middle of summer or later in the year. And um, because, you know, not a lot of options, but still you can go explore the next day and, and kind of make camp wherever right. you, you, you see fit. But, but yeah, no, awesome. I mean, just yeah, picturesque. I so. mean, those spots right on the lake are so prime. Um, <laughs> but but like where the guys camped up, where we were kind of hiking at sunset or sunset, that was a really nice spot too. Like yeah, you probably have the view right there. Yeah, yeah, really, really yeah. great stuff. So day four, uh, final day. Even though we we kind of headed out last day. And then we kind of took a detour to what the route is on uh, the website, but we got to go down by Castle Crags, which which I thought was pretty cool. And those were those granite monoliths that we came by. We stopped. We took some pictures. I think, you know, if I were to go back there, I'd kind of want to hike up there and explore the area a little bit just because you can't drive up there. Yeah, so it's it's funny because it's castle crags and then and then then there's the um trinity alps right the correct yep and and you know throughout my entire life i've driven up and down the i5 i mean dozens of times um you know from pasadena to portland pasadena to portland since you know since i was little and i have ignored the sort of area between you know the, the you know you know weed california and more or less Sacramento, like, right. Yep. Um, I've just, you know, I mean, Shasta is right there. So it's always been like, all right, go to Shasta. But I never thought about that section that we literally were doing between on the, you know, between those two points on the West side. And I had no idea. And I'm that castle crags are like right off the five practically, yeah. you yeah. know, more or less. Right. And uh, I, I had no idea. So I'm definitely can't wait to go back there. Cause we didn't really get to explore it. But, totally. you know, that's a whole nother area that you can just go that I doubt many people ever think about because it's an in it, it, it's an in between spot. This is, it's not a destination that unless you're probably a local, like you said, yeah. you know, if, if you're not going to Shasta, your probably next destination is going to be closer to Sacramento to, you know, then go you know, towards San Francisco or something. Um, but, you know, that whole area is beautiful and I had no idea. It's right off the five. I know it's really easy to miss on the five, but if you're looking for it, you'll catch a few glimpses of it. And you're kind of like, whoa, that looks like a mini Yosemite up there. And it, it kind of is because, you know, most of the coastal range south of there does not have granite in it. You know, that yeah. is one of the more. And that's what that, makes it really cool, right? Is the yeah. granite. Yeah. 
Totally. And you get some of that. You get a lot of granite up in the Trinity Alps for sure. It gets really rugged up there, but it's, it's a unique zone. Um, and it's, uh, I think that is like in, you know, the trans, I guess the transverse ranges down in Los Angeles, um, which go up to like 10,000 feet or whatever. I don't know if those, I guess those are part of the coast ranges, but the, the true coast ranges that kind of start North of, of LA and then go all the way up the coast. Um, that's like the most rugged region right there is in the Klamath mountains right there in the Trinity Alps. Yeah. I believe Mount Eddy is the high point. So it's a really cool, cool spot. All right. We're burning pavement again. We got to go up the five a little bit uh, to get over to Mount Shasta, which is essentially going to be the last leg. And some people call it the Mount Shasta loop. I believe it is road or route 31 that basically kind of does like a 270 degree loop around Mount Shasta. It doesn't do a whole 360 degree starts kind of on the Southwest section uh, quickly gives away to dirt. Again, this is, if you're in the area, this is something that you could do in half a day. I mean, if you just wanted to go out there and burn it, you could do it in two hours if you didn't want to stop. Yeah. But this day compared to Red Bluff compared to Ruth Lake, the weather's a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's, um, I think we were starting to get some snow up there, weren't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was below freezing or something. Yeah, no, it was, I don't remember what it was there, but we were getting snowflakes. I think a little bit or, of rain and some moisture. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I meant uh, the, the next, the, that night when, when, they, when we were camping. Yeah. But, we'll talk yeah. about that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we do the loop around Mount Shasta, which was, was pretty easy. Um, I remember, cause I, I hadn't done it before that I was constantly waiting to see Mount Shasta and I'm sure there's some good viewpoints on the Southern end, but it really doesn't kind of present itself until you start making toward the Southeast flank. And then you kind yeah. of hit a section where there was, I think there was a forest fire around mud Creek. Yeah. Um, where there was that nice little river crossing. That was, that was a rad river crossing, by the way. Um, oh yeah, that really was fun. Kind of a yeah. Cool zone. We we're kind of on the mountain too. So we were, we were, well, you know, so. we, well, we did some exploring up the mountain. I know we kind of tried yeah. to do some back roads and hit some dead ends, but that was, that was kind of cool. It kind of had some yeah. like Pacific Northwest vibes up there, but, um, then it opens up and, oh, sorry. And it's right there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think of that? It, it, so that's where we, we kind of stopped and took some photos, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean it, yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't nearly as clear of a day. And yeah. you know, we finally were there. We were like, well, we, we, you know, this is the Shasta Trinity trip. We, were, we got to see Shasta. Um, and then it kind of, you know, and we had a lot of fun just kind of doing that little bend and driving our cars and lining them up and, and taking some photos. And it was, I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, that's, that's, again, we saw at the first, you know, fire watch tower, you know, where we were going, you're finally there. And then just seeing it sort of open up in the back of, you know, in, in the back and in, in back of you and everything. And it was awesome. Totally. Yeah, no, it was really cool. And then, so we did the, we did the Shasta loop. I don't know if we didn't like three, four hours. Um, it's not, it was that, quick. It's not that long because you can drive it pretty fast. I mean, it's not technical. It's kind of like a wide dirt road that you can probably go 30 the whole way if you wanted. Yeah. I think the beginning before that point where it sort of opened up, we were kind of doing some more ex, you know, exploring around some roads that were a little off the main, tr you know, um, coordinates that we had the, the main route that we had planned. Um, but then, you know, after that dropping down, it was, I think it kind of evened out and there was yeah. a few offshoots, but we more or less were just like, all right, let's just kind of book it. And we were, we were kind of hauling. Yeah. And then I think what's even interesting about that route, like on the side that we started on, it's pretty lush and, you know, like what you would see in a, in an Oregon forest kind of on the Western yeah. corridor over there. But then as you kind of get to the Eastern side, it gives away to the high desert. And then all of a sudden the trees, the big trees are gone and it's kind of like sagebrush and small little like pinion pines and stuff like that. Yeah, just it's it's totally not, its own. not too, too unlike, you know, Mount hood where, you know, on the, the, the West side of Mount hood, it's just, I mean, 
and most of the area of Mount Hood National Forest is just crazy lush and everything. But then you have the high desert sort of bend and everything on the, the wow. but, but it, but it, it was weird because it kind of seemed like a smaller area. We really covered that area in a much shorter amount of time than I would say you kind of have when you, you're doing the hood route or something. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, we finished on military pass road. I forget the highway that it spits out on. We did the complete thing. Um, and then we'll kind of do a wrap up in a second here. Then we, we decided to like, Hey, it's kind of, I don't know. It was like mid afternoon. Wilman, Wilman and Dennis decided they were going to head home, but I know yeah. you, me and, and, uh, Daniel decided, well, Hey, we're in the area. Let's just, uh, let's just go do camp. one more night out. Yeah. So I think we went up to Gumboot Lake, which was kind of in the vicinity of Castle Crags again. And I think we get up there at like 4.30 and it's 45 degrees out. It's yeah. freaking, it's freezing. Mind, I mean, mind you, it was 95 degrees when we had met in Red Bluff and we were kind of all prepared for a heat wave throughout this trip. One second. <laughs> I just lost no you in one, of my, in one of my uh, ears. All good, all good. I don't want to lose you in the other one. So we get up to Gumboot Lake, which is which is a pretty rad lake, by the way. And you can, it's all pavement to get up there. And it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking, it's freaking cold, man. Like I I didn't bring a ton of layers for this trip. I had enough layers, but I was cold. And thank God you had your uh your little portable propane fire pit. Yeah, did we not have like a real fire that night or something? Well, I don't remember. I think Daniel might have had had some firewood, but I don't know if we burned it all or whatever. But it was cold. Like it was, I was cold. Yeah, I was bundled I, I, up. Yeah, it was kind of funny being. I mean, it, granted, it was Northern California, and you know, but you know, May, early June or something, and being forty five degrees and waking up to snow on the ground. Um, it was like twenty eight in the morning. Yeah, 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 and you yeah. know, getting up it as early as we did, and everything, and packing up, and be like, all right, this is uh, this is not what we packed for. I did definitely did not have probably my normal, um, winter esque camping gear, but it was a yeah. cool spot to work, you know, uh, wake up to, and and I think those are some more developed sites, if they I'm are. not wrong. But again, yeah. give it was empty when we went, so it was it was super nice and. Um, one last little river crossing before we ended, you know, that we had a little fun in, but yeah, I mean, just another spot that I would definitely like to go back to and explore more. Um, but you know, not a bad wrap up to the trip. So cool. Yeah. What did you think upon like finishing? Obviously that wasn't officially part of the route, but what was kind of your takeaway? Um, you know, maybe immediately upon finishing it or, or having some time to think about it. Um, well, you, you can probably definitely tell by my enthusiasm with Tamarack Lake that that I, I have told people to go to Tamarack Lake and I, I will not continue. Too many. To <laughs> no, not too many. I haven't told people the name, but I'm like, I got this spot. It's yeah. about, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's about seven hours from Pasadena. It's about seven hours from uh, Portland, Oregon. It's just right in the, you know, kind of midpoint and seven, kind of seven, it might, it might be like 10 hours from Pasadena. That is, that is a long haul. The sorry, red bluff is seven hours yeah. and seven hours, 40 minutes from uh, Pasadena yeah. and uh, seven hours from, from Portland. So somewhere in there. Right. Um, but I mean, I just, I had such a great experience and I was just like, like, like why I think we do these routes is, yeah. is it's not all picked, you know, sometimes we're in the middle of a forest and you can't see anything. It's just yeah. dense and there's nothing around and you wouldn't want to camp there alone, like the one spot. And then you come to spots like Tamarack Lake um, yeah. and, and there's nobody around. It's dispersed camping. There's not some, you know, developed campsite, you know, where, you know, you have, uh, you know, up here close to like the Gifford, you know, Pincho over by Mount Rainier and everything, just every lake around there is just, you know, packed during the summer, yeah. you know, same with Mount Hood and everything. And this was just, I mean, despite it being the time of year that we went just perfect. And, and then so many other cool points of interest. Um, I mean, I was super happy. I wish there were some more technical elements to it. I think we, most of our rigs, 
um, were cut out for sort of the technical aspects. And that, that would have been a little bit, um, you know, more interesting to see some more, you know, things like that. But I mean, it's Northern California. We saw some pretty rad spots. We did. covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. So, um, yeah, so yeah. I, think, I think what I really liked about this spot, it goes through so many different zones. It goes through kind of like lush Pacific Northwest forest, kind of like yeah. NorCal undulating hills between like open grasslands and the forest. You get over to Mount Shasta, you see the, you see the granite peaks and castle crags and all that and then you see mount shasta and then the high desert right Uh oh did we lose you well i think we may have lost joey here are you able to turn on i can't hear you are you able to turn on your mic all right i think we lost joey it's all good we are about to wrap up the podcast here He's back. Welcome back. Oh yeah, sorry. It was a button. It was a button that I wasn't pushing. So sorry. All good. So, you know, I, I think this is a great route for, you know, it's definitely suitable for beginners. Uh, the Tamarack Lake section is only a couple miles to get up there. And if you have a forerunner and you got a friend, there's really only like one or two little sections with some roots and it's not that gnarly. It's a mild blue trail, I would say. Um, throw it in four low. You can get up there. The rest of the trail I keep my, I mean, I'm in a land cruiser, so I'm in, I'm in uh, full-time four wheel drive, but I do keep the center diff lock on whenever I'm dirt just for safety reasons. Um, you know, it can be done outside of Tamarack Lake with like a Subaru or something like that. There's nothing gnarly along the trail. Now, if you did want to do the technical stuff, like you said, we saw that, um, that little caravan, that entourage of Jeeps, some really rad Jeeps. So yeah, there's yeah. Tra there are yeah, trails up there even. and we saw some gnarly stuff. So I think, you know, if you want to push your limits, there was definitely stuff up there that I saw that I was like, I'm, I'm not taking my truck up that, you know, yeah, like yeah, my yeah. truck is not going to make it up that. So oh, no, def that definitely, definitely not some, some sections that I would want to take my car on, but, um, <laughs> but you can have a little bit more fun up there. So for sure. Joey, I just wanted to thank you for coming on to the podcast. Uh, you're our first guest talking about one of the routes on our website. Uh, hopefully we can have you on again and, and we'll get on the trail soon. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys, this is Ben signing off from Overland Trail Guides. Be sure to check us out at www.overlandtrailguides.com. If you're on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, and if you're on one of the podcast channels, be sure to subscribe to us too. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you.